Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. We got over 1,100 of these available for your listening pleasure. We continue to do that as often as we can. Uh, welcome to 2022, by the way. Happy New Year to those that celebrate this actually being released on the new year. Uh, and so hopefully your New Year's and the end of 2021 went well for you. What are some signs of burnout? Those are things we're looking at. Also, if you're looking for life, relationship, business coaching, habit change, all that good stuff, would love to connect with you in the new year. Please feel free to reach out at PO Perception on Twitter or in the About Me section of this YouTube page. Either one will get you in touch with me or a member of my team that we can go from there. So what are some signs that you can connect on a deeper level with avoiding burnout? So the first thing is if you're constantly putting things off, this is a sign of burnout. There's always the self-deceptive lie that I'll get to it later. Later will come and, and I'll feel better later or later is going to be the time that, that I feel mo most comfortable with doing something. But the problem is later eventually comes and you still don't feel better and so um, your your level of patience also will decrease when you are constantly dealing with feelings of procrastination and or frustration related to the quality of life that you're having and or the things that you want out of your life. When you begin to understand that now is the time for action, provided that you've thought things through, obviously we're not encouraging uh, impulsive or impetuous action, but at the same time, acting is much better than being passive because you can only change things through action. You don't change things just by sitting around and waiting. And so it creates, um, you know, some challenges as it relates to finding that right balance between acting and planning. But you should be in one of those two phases, taking action or planning to take positive action. The next thing to look at is um, if you are near burnout, you're more likely to isolate yourself. Isolation is a coping mechanism for burnout in that it causes people to believe, hey, if I'm not dealing with people, I'll get time to rest. The problem is if your mind isn't resting, then your body isn't resting either. And a lot of people don't quite understand that as a concept. They don't fully understand that you know, rest is about your mind shutting off as well as your body shutting off or down and slowing down. And so when you're when you're isolating, it's often a reason to continue to be in your brain. No rest, no sleep, no proper eating is another sign of burnout. When you are, um, you know, in a burnout mode, you're less likely to do auxiliary functions, sleep, eat and do the things that may need to get done. Because you're looking at life going, I can do it later. And again, the later lie is the lie that says there's always going to be more time. There's always going to be a better time to do something. There's always going to be something that I can do better and in, in a happier, healthier way. And that time never comes. The next thing is you don't necessarily make time or have time for your hobbies in the way you, reason you most recently did. And your performance of both work and home-related duties suffer. So this translates to feeling like nothing ever goes in accordance with the plan that you want, and your life then takes on a form of looking for outs, looking for painkillers, literally meaning drugs, but also painkillers like other relationships or other points of distraction. When you're constantly living a painkiller lifestyle, you're only thinking about the effect of the next few minutes, the next few days, the next few months. You're not necessarily thinking about how does this affect me six months from now, a year from now, two years from now. And while doing that all the time isn't going to be a good thing to do because, you know, your mind will get the better of you in a lot of ways in that scenario. At least having some long-term planning is necessary in order to be able to make healthy and smart and wise and justifiable and just decisions. And it can be super uncomfortable when you realize that you haven't been um, making decisions that are working to your best, uh, your best functional level. And so that becomes problematic too. So hopefully this is helpful. I encourage you to reach out if there's more that I can do to be of more assistance to you. Now or in the future through 2022 and beyond, please keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.